What is up, people? Welcome back to the second part of the podcast where I'm going to go through number 16 to number one. And uh, yeah, that's it for the intro. Let's get this started right now. So at number 16, I have Michael Bransek Nygaard. Uh, Nygaard is a pretty big boy, actually. <laughs> he's like 200 pounds and something around six foot one and six foot two. Uh, he's a right winger that plays in the Alsvens Kans or however you call that thing. And started the year pretty slow. I actually didn't start slow because he started in the J20 and he was li lights out in the J20. But then he went to the Hockey Hal Vens Kens. <laughs> and it was pretty rough. But he kind of catched up a little bit. I think he has like five or six or maybe even seven games in a row where he had a point or something like that. So it, he's kind of getting going and he plays a very pro-like game. He's not a guy that's full of skills, but he's a guy that likes to play in the middle of the ice and gets his shot through uh, traffic in the middle of the ice. And he has a very, very solid shot. It's very hard and heavy. Um, yeah, but outside of that, he's not a guy, like I said, that has a lot of skills. Like, he doesn't have the greatest hands. He doesn't have the greatest, like, passing uh, abilities or the, the vision, the playmaking mind is not necessarily there. But he's a guy that competes hard. He's a guy that's gonna work hard on uh, on his two way game. He's gonna defend. Uh, he's gonna defend hard. He's gonna transition the puck because he's a good skater, and he's gonna shoot it hard on the net and score goals that way. So he's very very projectable, without being, um, like it's hard to it's hard to tell yourself that he's gonna be like a first line player. Probably not. It might be a top six, but I would put him more like a middle six guy. A guy that can go between the second line and the third line, like just move up and down the lineup a little bit because the skills are, like I said, are pretty limited. But the fact that he's a big guy that plays a power game, that has a hard shot, that goes in traffic and plays well, very dependable all everywhere in the, on the ice is going to help him a lot to find a spot in the NHL. So, yeah, number 16, Michael Brunseg Nygaard. And at number 15, I have Tiji Ginla. And um, he's... He's a candidate to go probably higher by the end of the year because I had limit not limited viewings, but like when I was building my 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 ranking, I was trying to find a spot for him because I like him a lot, but I didn't like him enough to have him higher than that. But I really, really like his game. So I think that by the end of the year he might be higher than number fifteen, maybe close to the top ten. I'm not sure he's gonna crack the top ten, but maybe somewhere around there. Um let me just open his page so I can see the stats at the same time as I'm talking. Uh, yeah, all right. So Tijigila is not necessarily the biggest guy. Like he's like a six foot guy, 180 something. Uh, but he's really, really, really dynamic as a player. And when I say dynamic, is like he skates very well. He drives the play. He's a very, very good playmaker and a very good shooter. He does everything that he does offensively. He does it very well and he does it fast. It's not. Uh, He's not a guy that will slow the game down and try to make things happen by slowing it down. He's really just, he plays at 100% all the time. And he plays 100%, whether it's defense, whether it's on the board, whether it's in the corners, whether it's in front of the net, whether it's just a passing game or shooting the puck, everything is done at full force. Something that I really like, his compete is really, really, is really, really high. Uh, like the defense defensively he played on he played on the PK a little bit and he's been pretty good uh in his own zone he will compete hard and he will try to pin players against the board or he will try to apply back pressure on the players and it's i mean it's decent for a guy of, of his age <laughs> it's not the greatest but it's decent but the, his game is really in the offensive zone where he can really wire the puck and he can, uh, whether it's from shooting or from passing is really really good at that uh outside of that that's it. I think also when I watched him at the at the top prospect game, he was one of the best player on the ice, if not the best player on the ice. Like all game long, he was creating all kinds of plays. Not necessarily the the biggest and the flashiest plays, but a lot of a lot of little given goals and just making pro type of plays that just works and keep the 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 play moving forward and attacking in the zone. He was really really good. So. Yeah, Tijigila, number 15, and uh, like I said, might go up by the end of the year. At number 14, I have Liam Greentree. I already made a full video on him, so um, uh, I'm probably I'm going to 
not say as much maybe but uh liam green tree is uh is a big guy i think he's now six foot three or something like that he plays around 200 pounds he's one of the best scorer in the ohl and i think i'm not sure if it's still the case but he was the best scorer uh, as a draft eligible so that is great and his game is even even though he's not the best passer right now like i say in my in my top uh, in my scanning report on him is that he has the ability and the vision to create passing plays so i think that even though right now it's not like a strength i think it's something that it could become a strength so considering the fact that he's already big and that he's already a good shooter and he, he goes in traffic and he ha he like he can shoot the puck really fast he doesn't need a lot of space to shoot it he He's really good at handling the puck in drafting, keeping keeping it away from poke checks and from defenders trying to strip it from him. Uh, but if you add the f another dimension to his game, like a, a better passing game, which I think he has the, the ability to add, he's going to be a very dangerous player. The thing is, he's not very, 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 he's not, he's not a great skater. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. Like, he's definitely under average right now. It could work out. He could become average. Uh... By, by the time he gets to the NHL, but there's definitely work that needs to be done there, and it's going to help him create a lot when he reach higher levels because right now, obviously, in the OHL, you can get by with a slower skating pace, uh, but at the NHL level, it's very different. Some people might do it like Jason Robertson and stuff like that, but outside of that, there's not a lot of guys that can make, like, they can be really offensive threats without being great skaters, so... Not necessarily great skater, but at least average skater. And right now, Liam Greentree is not there, but he might get there. But all the other tools from the size to the compete to uh, the shot to uh, the passing ability, it's all there. So there's there's something there's something when you watch him that you, you look at him and you, you think. And wait, wait, when I watch him, I think he's a future top six guy. It's hard to not see him being a top six guy, but at the same time, uh, we never know because of the skating. Skating can sometimes make or break a player. So uh, we'll see how it goes for him. All right. So number 14, Liam Greentree. Number 13, it's Trevor Connolly. And he's another player that might go up or mm. might go down. <laughs> but he's been on fire lately. So uh, probably go up, I would say. The thing with Connor, uh, Connor, Trevor Connolly is that he's... He's a very, very talented player. He's in terms of skills, he's in the top ten. That's for uh, that's for sure, at least in my opinion. But he's very uh, individualistic. No, he, he doesn't use his teammate a lot to make the play go forward. He doesn't try to get little give and goes to uh, transition the puck or to um, just to move the play forward in the offensive zone. He doesn't use. His teammates at all like he, he wants to do everything on his own and that's one thing that i don't like about uh beckett seneca and it's a it's the same thing for trevor Connolly. even though he's probably better in that sense uh it's still not great like his game is very ushl let's say if you put if you take his game you put transpose into the nhl it just doesn't work but he has the thing is that he, he's He's a big guy, like he's six foot one, but he's very thin right now. But he's still six foot one, so there's a, there's a frame right there that needs to be filled up. But outside of that, he's a big guy that can that can skate well, that has tons of skills. So, and you can see he has the vision, he has the understanding how to create from the outside in, or how to go to the inside and pass the puck to uh, recreate create chances, or how to open space for his teammate. Like he he's really good. He's really good at Okay, so you can you can see that he can do it, but he doesn't do it often. He he wants to do everything on his own. He wants to shoot the puck himself. He wants to like go through the whole team on his own. So that's one thing that is stopping me from getting him a little higher than that. But it's also a thing that the players that are 17 years old, you know, they they come with question marks. And that's the it's the only it's the only thing about him is that is that is it is is he gonna fix his decision making is he gonna get better at using his teammate 
if the answer is yes, then you got a real player and he's going to be very good. If the answer is no, then he might not even make it. You know, <laughs> so it's really like the the floor. The floor is not high, but the ceiling is pretty high with him. That's that's how I like to say it. All right. Uh, 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 there's also the fact this like I've heard a lot about the character issue and um, all the stuff that he said or the thing that he posted on Instagram or whatever social network that he used. Uh, those are mistake when you're young. That's fine. It's a uh, Stuff happens. He he uh, he worked like in the Jewish community, something like that, to make up for it, and he did all the work that he needed. But I heard about like still character issues, and honestly, I didn't talk to him, didn't talk to his coach, didn't talk to anybody about it, so I have no clue. But that's what that's what the word that's going around is that he still has some character issues. I don't know how much weight I would put into that, but it's still it's still something that's out there. All right. So number 13, Trevor Connolly. Let's jump to number 12. And at number 12, it's Catter. Catter. <laughs> Carter Yakim Chuck. Um, like Yakim Chuck is probably my favorite defenseman in the draft. Like he, I don't have him number one, obviously. Uh I already made a video about my my number one defenseman, but he's a candidate for being my top defenseman by the end of the year. Like, it's not something that's impossible. Is it likely? Probably not. But every time I watch him, I'm just so impressed by by his game. It Like, he's not a defensive force right now. He's way too, like, he's very physical, and he's sometimes too physical. He gets himself out of the play trying to just hit people. And he doesn't hit people to separate them from the puck. He really just hit people to send them flying. Right? So he's just very physical in that way. Uh, and offensively, he, he creates so much with his shot and he creates so much with his hands. He has probably the best hands as, as a defenseman, in my opinion. He can dangle around defenders, not around defenders, but he can dangle around coverage very easily. He toe drags around everybody. If you just watch like the, the top prospect game, which is a game that a lot of people watch compared to just regular OHL, WHL, or QMJHL games, and... I think that just in that game, he had like three, four, or five instances where he just dangled everybody on the ice to get a shot in or to make a pass. So he has great hands. He has a booming shot from the point, but like booming shot from the point, really booming. <laughs> and defensively, he's very physical. So there's a lot of cleanup to be made, uh, whether it's also his breakout. Like he likes to skate it out a lot, but he's not the greatest skater like he's an average skater i would say probably i've seen people say that he's a good skater a great skater i i don't believe so i think that uh, a lot of time where he tries to uh to break out the puck by himself somebody catches him and strap, strips the puck away from him so there's cleanup there's a cleanup job that needs to be done on the transition part of the game and on the defensive part of the game i like i like players that are very uh how can i say that Players that are good defensively, like the first thing that I look for in a defenseman is the defensive side of the game. Like if it's all over the place and it's really not bad and it's really not good, like ever, uh, I have a hard time ranking them high. But Carly Akemchuk, there's potential there. It's not like he's not great at all. He sometimes defends pretty well and he uses body a lot to defend and he prevents entry at the blue line. So I like that. He plays aggressive. He's very, very aggressive, actually. But, uh, like I said, there's a cleanup job that needs to be done on the, his decision making on defense and on the transition. Offensively, it's great. Uh, like I said, with his booming shot and his hands, he can create all kinds of openings and all kinds of lanes for shooting or for passing the puck. So that's not going to be a problem. But yeah, Kari, I can judge. If you want to have a fun time watching uh, a CHL game or just a WHL game, just watch the Calgary Hitman and uh, you'll have fun with him. Right. So number twelve, Carrie I can chuck. And at number eleven, I have another defenseman that's a bit uh of a risk. Zane Perek. And oh my <laughs> I change my mind on Zane Perek pretty much like every day. Not I change my mind, but I change where I have him like in my ranking all the time. Some uh, sometimes I have him a little bit higher than that, sometimes I have it way lower than that. It's just it depends which game that I that, that I saw. Like, the thing is that 
everybody talks about his defensive game, how it's poor and all this stuff. And I think that's just like a trend. It's a trend. People just talking about the fact that his, his defensive game is poor. I think it's a little bit underrated. It's not like he doesn't understand. He, he doesn't place himself in passing lanes. He uses his stick to poke checks or to create or to block lanes from shooting or for like, it's, it's not great. He's not, he's obviously not a physical player whatsoever. Uh, I don't think he looks for physicality and I don't think he wants physicality. So that might be a little bit of an issue when you go deep in your zone to retrieve a puck. Uh, if you don't have the strength or any kind of physicality to at least try to gain puck possession and send it back the other way, it it's an issue, right? But he has great skating. He ha He's a very, very intelligent player. So I think that if you don't use your physicality, you can at least use your skating and your mind to uh, send misdirections and retrieve the puck that way. You know, it's like if you take uh, Zellweger, for example, he's a small guy with very, very good skating and a very, very good mind. He's I don't think like defensively, he's never going to be the greatest, but he's going to be able to take the puck and escape pressure and send the puck moving forward. And that's what I expect from Perec. He's never going to be the best rush defender. He's never going to be protecting his blue line like his life depended on it. He's never going to be a guy that's going to break the cycle and disrupt plays that much. Like he's going to use his stick. He's going to do whatever he can do with what he have. But that's where his defense is going to stop. But I think he can bring so much offensively that it kind of negates the fact that his defense is going to be average at best. I don't think his defense is going to be like Tony D'Angelo style. Like I've seen a lot of people say that uh, Zayn Barak might be a Tony D'Angelo. I don't see it that way. I think he's a much, much, much smarter player. And one of the reasons I think he's a much, much, much smarter player than that, the fact that the guy is 17, and I read on NHL.com like a, a year ago that he had his high school diploma like two years ago or two years and a half ago, something like that. He's been taking university classes for two years now, and the guy's like 17 or 18. Uh, let me check. I didn't actually open the page. Yeah, he's still 17 for a couple of days. So, um, yeah, so actually a very smart guy. His family, I think his, his father's a doctor, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. So, you know, the, the mind thing is there. He's a very intelligent player, a very skillful player, and he's a good skater. Not like the fastest skater, but he's extremely agile. He uses his edges, inside edge and outside edge, very, very well to... Uh, the sign, the sign, send fake messages and just like fool players, so he can really escape pressure really well that way. But he's a very risky player. Like he, he doesn't mind sending a pass through the middle of the ice. So <laughs> sometimes that get caught up, and uh, yeah, it doesn't help his projection. But like I said, those things can be coached. His offense cannot be coached. So there's that. You always have to take that into account. When a guy can play the offensive side of the game the way that he can, even though he has defensive uh, deficiencies, it's still you cannot coach what he can do on the offensive side. The way that he can move the puck forward and the way that he can just create at the blue line, whether from his shot or from his passing and his skating and his fake, uh, is just the way he shakes defenders and all this stuff, it's not something that can be learned. So the, the fact that he has it at 17 years old, now you need to coach the defense to be a bit more consistent, better decision-making, not sending the puck to the middle of the ice all the time, and be a little bit less risky, like take better decision, right? But outside of that, uh, potential is sky high with this guy. He's just very, very, very good and very, very smart. So yeah, Zayn Perek at number 11. And <laughs> next, next ranking, it could be much higher or it could be much lower it depends on how i feel all right so number 10 i have consta elenius and i have consta elenius number 10 because how can i say that like i don't want to sound too harsh but it's because everybody has has him in their top 10 so there must be something about <laughs> uh, i'm not a not a big fan uh, of Kansalenius, as uh, as you can probably see now, uh, he, he doesn't have any kind of dynamic ability. He he's a guy that does everything well, but doesn't have that much skill. Like he's not the best skater. He doesn't have the best hands. Like he does have some good box skills, but it's not like it's, I don't know. He I think he uses space quite well, 
but there's a lot more space to in Liga, but use space quite well to send the puck into pocket of ice or even to create space for his teammate, to create space for himself. He attracts players on himself. He's good at doing the basic offense play. Like it, and it, When I say basic, I mean it's the basic at the NHL level, but it works at the NHL level. So, And he's also a good two-way guy. He works hard uh, in all three zones. Uh, and like I said, he skates well, so he can, he can definitely... Um, transition the puck and in his own zone he's going to work hard to retrieve the puck or to uh, you know he's not going to be cheating at, he's going to be not going to be cheating past his blue line to wait for the puck and just uh, go score on a breakaway or create on a two on one that's not that's not his style he is very involved in his zone very involved in the neutral zone and then when he gets to the um, the offensive zone he keeps his play more simple but he, like I said the fact that he, he has a, he has a Okay shot, like a good shot. Okay shot, I would say maybe. And nothing nothing that really stands out, but he's a good passer, but he's very good, like I said, at creating the space to send the puck into. So it's not like he's a he's an excellent passer that can just wire the puck through legs and stick like Berkeley Catton. That's not the way that he plays. He just creates the openings and then send the puck into into like a zone on the ice for a player to catch it and score from there or do his work from there. So a good distributor and a good like felicitator, but nothing flashes really. When I anyway, I didn't I didn't watch like I didn't see ten games of him. I saw like four games of him or something like that. So and I saw the 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 U twenties where it was okay. Okay, <laughs> was it the U twenties? I think it was the U twenties. Let me check the second. I'm just gonna check in my list of games. I'm not on the right page. Just a second. Be patient with me. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I watched the U twenties, and uh, I don't remember him much in the U twenties. So that's not. It's not a bad thing, and it's not a good thing. I know that he played. I know I remember seeing him, but it's not, I don't remember many plays where that he did anything that looked or that flashed any kind of high end offense. So, so by the same time, I wasn't high on Anton Lundell when. Uh, when he, he was uh, when he was in Liga, I, I'm still not that high on him. Actually, he, I think he's going to be good. I think he's a middle six center. I don't think he's anything special. And I think that Conselinius is a bit, um, a bit the same way, but smaller, <laughs> in the, but a better skater. So, same type of guy, like a smart player uh, that can do stuff offensively, works hard defensively transition the puck and be be, be dependable be a, uh, the type of guy that his coach gonna put on the ice in, in a very in dangerous situation or basically in every situation so yeah that's it for Constant I'm not I'm not it's, I'm not a good salesman for him <laughs> but it's just the way it is I'm just not I'm not his biggest fan let's put it that way all right number nine I have Ziv Buyim and He's another one that sometimes I move up and then sometimes I move down. I don't really put him ever. I don't really have him higher than number nine like ever. But I do sometimes put him like lower when I play with my stuff, play with my rankings, and I'm like he, because it's hard to see if his it's hard to know if his game is really that translatable to the NHL at least the 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 offensive part of it. Uh, I think he moves very well at the blue line. Uh, he creates a lot of lanes. He creates a lot of offense from the blue line, moving up and down, moving left and right. His uh, his lateral movement is excellent, like really excellent. One of the best in the draft, I think. The way he can explode laterally to just open space and not open space, but open lanes for for a pass or open lanes for a shot is uh, pretty remarkable. But uh, yeah, he's not the biggest guy. <laughs> He's six foot, so it's not it's not like that's bad, but he's not the biggest guy. Defensively, it's a work in progress. He's like he's he's not the greatest at defending the rush. He's not breaking up the cycle. He's not very disruptive. Um, he he plays a little bit like Cole Hudson in the sense that he will take on his player because uh, he doesn't have much of uh, anything else. Like he doesn't have much physicality or something like that. So. He sticks to his player pretty close, and since he has good skating, he can match his speed, match his feet, and uh, create a very tight gap. And he, like I said, he sticks to him and tries to disrupt him that way. But once they establish themselves, he can't do much. But when it's time to retrieve the puck, 
there's not many players that are as good as him, I think, to retrieve the puck. The way that he goes into the corner and he just never gets hit, never... Like, you know, sometimes you will take a player that isn't, like, a necessarily the best skater or the smartest defender. He's going to go into the corner to retrieve the puck, but then he's going to get pinned in the corner, and then it's going to be a battle, and he's going to put his foot on the puck, and he's going to try to pass it to a teammate. It's not going to work. They're going to get the puck back, and, you know, the way it works, right? But with Zeev William, it's, like, if he goes into the corner to get the puck and he has the, he has the advantage of speed or he's first there, he's getting out with the puck. Like, the way he can just roll off of checks and he gen- can just, like, send misdirection and send the guy left and he, he exits on his right or whatever it is that he's doing. He's just very good at getting the puck from the corner or from the board and get the play moving by escaping the pressure and sending the puck forward. So, uh, defensively, I think that's his biggest, like, the thing that he brings to the game uh, is... Yeah, like his best attribute defensively is his puck retrieval. It's not necessarily his defensive game. Offensively, he brings a lot. Like he has a good shot and he, he's very good at moving the plays. Like I said, the way he explodes laterally to open space and create lanes, it's pretty remarkable. But yeah, that's about it for Ziv William. It's a, he's a, a very good player. It's just I'm not sure. Like the 34 points in 26 games in the NCAA, I don't think it really reflects the his offensive game. Like, he's, he's, he's not that good offensively. At least it's not what it looks like when you watch him. He may, maybe he is. Maybe he will be that kind of player. I don't know, but I have reservations, let's say. All right? So, number eight, I have Anton Silayev. And Mr. Silayev is a very big guy. <laughs> he's like... He's six foot seven, and he's he's still pretty light right now. I think he's like two oh five or something like that, and so he has a lot of space to grow into his body because obviously at six foot seven, there's still a lot of space if you're just two hundred pounds, right? But um, and also a very 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 good skater. Like he's he's big and he's extremely mobile. Not just like a good skater, he's a very good skater. I wouldn't say he's elite, but the the way he skates. Like when when he moves forward and the way he can use his crossovers to gain speed and create speed through the neutral zone, or the way that he can pivot, it's like it's super smooth and the guy is, is, a, is a freaking giant, right? So <laughs> it's pretty impressive to see. And his four way mobility, he can like doesn't explode laterally like Zeev William can do, but he's uh he's very good to move in every direction. He's very good at uh, walking the line in the offensive zone, even though like offensively. I have doubts on him and more doubts than I have on Zeev William because I just said I had doubts on Zeev William. But the thing is, he had great production at the beginning of the year. I think that like in his first, I don't remember how many, but he had like, I don't know, eight points in his first 10 games or something like that. And then it really, really, really cooled down. And that's more the Slayev. Now he has 11 points in 55 games. And that is more representative than the player that we've seen at the beginning of the year where he was cre- he wasn't actually creating that much. A lot of his points were just like deflections or rebounds from a shot on net or something like that. So it's not like he was creating uh, passing lanes and, cre- you know, making plays. He was not really making plays. So it's still the case now, but at least now the, the, the production kind of reflects it. But the fact that he's at his age, he's 17 years old, he's an April guy, I think. He, the fact that he plays 15 minutes and uh, he has like a minute 30 or a minute 45, something like that, of power play time on a team that's a very decent team, it's basically unheard of. His production is basically unheard of too, but like I said, it's not very representative of the player that he is. His game is really defense first. It's really physical, overwhelming type of defense. Uh, there's going to be some cleaning up to do, obviously, because sometimes being too aggressive is not the best thing. It's a bit like uh, Carter Yakinchuk, the way he gets himself out of the play by trying to just destroy people. It's sometimes a bit the same thing with Anton Slayev, but he has much better skating, so he can catch back if he makes a mistake. But the fact... Anyway, if you have... 
every team wants to draft a guy that's six foot seven that skates like the wind and can just demolish people, right? He's gonna defend his blue line, like I say, like like his life depend on it. He's gonna not gonna let people go in. He has like his reach, it's like it's half the ice, right? <laughs> <laughs> like he's so rangy in the, and he, so he can use his stick he can use his physicality he can overwhelm player around the board or in the corners he defensively he's gonna be a monster that's for sure but what is it gonna be offensively is he gonna be able to use his skating to escape pressure and transition the puck is he gonna be able to use his skating and create passing lanes and shooting lanes and opening gaps in the offensive zone does he have that brain? Does he have that that sense to go up and down the zone, uh, go go in as the trailer, or even lead the rush and uh, lead the rush, get to the outside, send the puck to a trailer, so for a shot in the slot? Does he have that? Can he do it at the NHL level? I have doubts. I, I don't. I don't think he has it, but it's not impossible that he has it. But he has a defensive part of the game nailed down. Even though, like I said, it's going to need some cleanup, it's still high end. It's, it's the best in, the cla in this class, maybe with two other, maybe. But it, like I said, it's just the, the profile package is just so great. Like he's still very young, six foot seven, skates like the wind, extremely good defensively, extremely physical player. He's going to be taken probably higher than what I have it because obviously number eight is on the the lower side when I look at the rankings. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to go top five for sure. But it's just that I have my doubts on his uh, offensive part of the game. All right, so number eight, Anton Silaev. At number seven, I have Caden Lindstrom, and that's another one that I made a full video on, so I'm going to just breeze over it. But uh, he's a guy that's six foot four. And uh, he has, I think, 20, is he at 27 goals right now? Let me check a second. Kaden Lindstrom, stats. Yeah, 27 goals in 32, in 32 games. He's injured right now. But, um, yeah, he's like, he's another, he's another one that when you look at the profile, he makes teams salivate, right? The guy, 6'4", he skates really, really well. Has a very hard shot, and he's always in traffic. He's always <laughs> in the crease of the net. So as much as he can score from from a distance, and he has the shot to beat goalies from like mid-range, let's say, he's he always wants to go close to the net to take his shot. He, on the power play, he often will just stand beside the net and wait for the puck to come on his stick, and then he's going to do a 180 and rip the shot high, like, he does that all the time. He's very, very... Some nights he's very, very physical. Some nights he's not that physical. He tries to play more in the finish type of game. But I think that he's got... He, at least he was. He was, like, trying to find his balance. Not, not his balance, but trying to find a balance in his game between finish and, and like, his greedy game, if you want. Uh, the thing gonna, that's going to draft Caden Lindstrom, they, they're going to want him to play the greedy way, right? The guy, because he's aggressive, he's six foot four, he skates well, he's strong, he protects the puck really, really well when he wants to. Not all the time, but when he wants to, he's very, very good at it. So that's what the teams are going to want. They're not necessarily going to want the finest type of guy. He's not uh, he's not Quinton Byfield in the sense that Quinton Byfield is a finest guy or was a finest guy in junior now some he does have some power moves sometimes, but Katie Nistrom is a power guy. He's not a finished guy. So even though he has the shot, he has the skating. Uh, he he, can, he brings a lot offensively, defensively. It's also a work in progress, but he competes really hard. He the, he will back check. He will support his defenseman in the zone. He's not going to be cheating. But offensively, he can transition the puck so smoothly, he, and when he gets into the zone, he can he can send it to either like a player like Basha or something like that, and then position himself close to the net. And when he gets the puck, he just rips it on there. Or sometimes he's just he will protect. Like there's so many instances where you see him gain the zone, and then there's a, a defenseman trying to rip the puck from him, and he just protects it so well, and then he rips it top corner and. He's really impressive to watch. Like the the skill level is not 
it's not extremely high in the sense that I don't think he's a great passer, like at all. Uh, his hands are good without being like impressive hands. But when you take the profile of the skating, the size, the shot, the puck protection, he's and the physicality that he has, it's is the is a perfect profile for many NHL team that look for that type of player. All right. So uh, I have a full video. Like I said, you can go watch the full video if you want to see a ton of highlights and a lot of um, detailed, deep, uh, like dive in into his game. Uh, at number six, I have Artyom Levshunov. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's uh, I have him six and I was just about to switch him with, uh, with Sam Dickinson, who's my first defenseman on the board, because... I think the more the more I watch, the more I think he's the best defenseman in the in the draft. It, it's it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. In my opinion, between Leshunov, Yakim Chuck, and um, and uh, Sam Dickinson, it's gonna be pretty tight. But they're pretty different. I mean, Leshunov and Yakim Chuck are closer to each other than they are to um, to Dickinson. They have different type of skill set. But uh, Artem Leshunov is a uh, He's a big kid, man. When you watch him on the ice, he's like, like just two times larger than every other player. <laughs> it's the, and it's not like he's super heavy. He's like something around two hundred pounds, but he just look so like he's thick, <laughs> he's thick, and he, and defensively he's very very physical too. So um, I think that like his potential defensively, even though it's is another one that it's a work in progress. Like some nights. It's gonna be really good, and some some nights it's gonna be not that good. But it's very like high intensity, very involved, very like disruptive as a defender. He he goes all in. Like he's not just trying to block the passing lanes. He's gonna just come at you and overwhelm you and rip the puck from you and then send the send the puck the other way. He's not he's not a he's not a waiter. Okay, he's not going to be there just waiting for the puck to come to him and try to block the line. He's going to go get the puck. So he's very, very aggressive in that way. And he's very, very good, and he's very, very strong. So when he goes to the board, he wins the puck. When he goes in the corner, he wins the puck. When he goes uh, in the crease, he can clean up the clean up the box and box out player. He's a, he's good enough skater to escape pressure. He can uh, shake defenders off and shake the pressure off and uh, have clean have a, a clean lane for a pass or a clean lane for skating it out. Uh, yeah, he's built like a truck defensively, and he uses it, and he knows it. And 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 as, other than that, when you go to the offensive side, well, he's another one that he has a booming shot. He's been having a booming shot for so long. Like, he's been scoring goals for so long. And uh, he's also very good at passing the puck. Like, he uses his mobility a lot, and he's very, very... He activates a lot in the, from the blue line from the blue line in like he will go deep in the zone to create lanes a bit like i talked about it in my top 10 defenseman the video how um uh zellweger always goes super deep in the zone and sometimes he's like behind the net <laughs> trying to create from behind the net so if you have a team with a good system they're going to be able to replace a player at the line and have like you know so somebody that covers for him but if you don't have a good system and you have players that are a little bit all over the place, it might be hard to cover for for Levshunov. But the fact that he just plays up and down, left and right, and just create all kinds of lanes and space that way, and use his body to get to the middle as a defenseman. So yeah, he's like he's always like he's a fourth forward every time that he's on the ice. He's wait he he goes he's very risky because he goes deep into the zone and then he gets back on he gets back on track and go to the defensive zone and defend hard. But every time that he's on the ice, you can count on him as another forward, basically. So he, that's why he's almost a point per game. Is he a point per game? Let me check. Yeah, he's 20, 27 points in 28 games from Michigan State University. So uh, not a point per game, but very close to it. And uh, But I think his offense game is more... Is more projected. His game overall is more projectable than a player like Steve Buiem, who has a better production. And but it's just the fact, the way that he defends his physical tools and the way that he attacks, I think is just more projectable to the NHL than the way Steve Buiem is. All right. So watch out for him because he might be 
higher than that by the end of the year. And I think a lot of people are actually catching up on that. If I look at the ranking, two seconds. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like, basically, uh, everybody has them, like, number two, number three, number four. There's, like, the Hockey Network has them number 20. <laughs> but, yeah, so a lot of people are really high on him recently, but he's on the older side of the draft, so there's always that to take into account. But we've seen him coming for, for a long time, and I think that he's just living up to expectations that we had set for him. And, uh, yeah, so number six, I, if, you get, if you get left enough at number six, you can cry of joy, okay? <laughs> at number five, I have Cole Iserman, and I think I'm one of the very few that still has him high. Like, for some reason, he's falling in every, like, Every ranking that I've seen, he's falling sometimes outside the top 10. And it's a bit ridiculous, for real. It's a, like, I can understand anybody who has him like six or seven or eight or something like that. If you have him like outside your top 10, like, I don't remember who I saw there was outside the top 10, but there's, I'd like to remember, but my, my brain is half working. But anyway. It's impossible that you take this guy, you take his skill set and you say, no, that's not a top 10 guy. <laughs> if you actually watch the guy, there's no way that's the train of thought that you can have. Like, okay, is he a competitive two-way player? No, he's not. But if you watch him and you go into and you expect to have a two-way player, like, what are you doing? That's not what he is. He was never that. And he, I mean, he will probably never be that, but you don't need every single player on the ice to be two-way players. You, you need your wingers to do their job. You need them to either lock the weak side or you need them to, uh, you know, do, do their part defensively. But usually the center is the one that comes back deep and uh, that's it. So, so he's going to have his job to do and he's going to learn how to do it. And he's one of the youngest player in in the draft is like, August 29th in fact, or August 30th. And let me check. Yeah, August 29th. So very young player. He has a lot to learn. He's not the most competitive guy defensively, like I said. He, it's not just competitive. He just He's just not good at defending overall. But the, the toolkit and the dimension, like people say he's one-dimensional, and I agree in, in like to a certain extent. But the dimension that he's elite at is the hardest. So if you pair him with a, a center that's a good two-way center with a good distribution skills, you're golden, right? The, you, you need him to do his part and that's it. And it's not like he's, like he, he does nothing else. He Yes, he can score, but he can score every way you want it. He, for his shot is elite. There's just no way around it. But it's not just the one timer, and it's not just like it's not like he's always posted on the flank uh, with no players around him and just rip one timers. Okay, that's not the way he scores. Yes, he, he scores a lot like that, but he scores every other way too. Like a catch and release in traffic, he has no problem. Like his his hands in tight are very very good, so he can actually. Uh, to keep the puck away from poke checks and from defenders and rip the puck like and he needs basically a f like a foot even under a foot to release it to release his, the the puck with like extreme power so <laughs> so i don't know I, I i don't think i'm i'm doing a scouting report on him right now so i don't want to put too much cuz obviously i want to keep some for the scouting report but the way that he plays and the way that he scores is so versatile that it's not going to be a problem. It's it's not like there's people talking like he's uh, like like Wallstrom. I don't think he's like Wallstrom at all. He's very different. He's a he's a better skater and he's more competitive and he's also stronger and he goes to the middle. Like he's a very different player and the fact that he can score every way you want it, whether it's in traffic or on the flank or one timer or catch a release. Uh, he, he he's posted in front of the net and he tries to tap the puck to just deflect it but make it have more power he's he's everywhere scoring everywhere and like I said he's the youngest in the draft or one of the youngest in the draft so 
I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. He's just going to learn. He has plenty of time to learn. And he's going to score a lot. It's like, again, for a Habs fan, like if you have Cole Caulfield, Cole Caulfield, when he came into the league, he was very exciting player, right? But he was not very, he was not always a positive on the ice because he didn't have any kind of, uh, like he was not positive on the board or in the corners and defensively it was just not great. It's getting more there. He's more physical now. He's trying to get the puck into the corners. He's a lot like less scared and more involved offensively. He's a better passer than he ever was. He gets to the middle more. He's more involved defensively. He's never going to be Patrice Bergeron. That's not going to happen, but it's the same thing for for Iserman. He's never going to be Patrice Bergeron, but he's going to learn to play the defense part of the game. And the fact that he's even more versatile as a shooter and as a co scorer than Caulfield, and the fact that he's also much bigger, the guy is six foot and like 200 pounds, and he gets to the middle all the time. Uh, yeah, I think that he, the potential is immense. And like I said, yes, he's one-dimensional, but he's multi-dimensional in his one dimension, and his dimension is the hardest. So, <laughs> I don't know, just draft another guy to do your two-way game and let him score goals. All right, so <laughs> that's it for Cole Eisenman. And at number four, I have Berkeley Catton, and I just made a video on him like a couple of weeks ago. So same thing, I'm going to breeze over him. But basically, he's like top three, maybe top five passer in a draft. He's an extremely, extremely skilled passer, playmaking. The vision is incredible. Uh, some Sometimes, like, I, I know Celebrini is the best passer or the best overall offensive guy in in the no I mean Dem Demidov is a better offensive player than uh, Celebrini but so I'm gonna try to compare like Captain to let's say Demidov or uh, Celebrini in the passing game and I think he's really not that far behind he's uh yeah <laughs> he's, he's very very good he's very dynamic with the puck on his stick he can send the puck in places that you could have never thought that he could he's just very good right he's yeah he's a very good puck handler also uh he doesn't use it in a flashy way sometimes he does but in the, most of the time it's really just uh he uses smarts and he uses hands to redistribute the puck or send the puck in spaces that he could never thought he could he has a good shot but uh, like i said in my video i'm not sure what makes his shot that good because he scores a lot he doesn't stop scoring so he must have something that's pretty good about it. But at the same time, it doesn't look like it's explosive or anything like that. Yes, it's precise. Yes, probably the velocity is fine. But I don't know. <laughs> he scores a lot, but I'm not sure why. It's also from where he scores. He's always in the middle of the eye. So even though people, like, not people, but even though he's uh, he's like five foot eleven, and he's very thin also, he's like 160-something. One, uh, he's still always in the middle of the ice. Like, he doesn't really like to shoot from the flank except when it's a one-timer on the on the power play. But outside of that, every time that he shoots, it's in traffic. It's in the low slot or the high slot. That, that's where he plays. So it's very, very trans translatable. Like, yes, yes, he's small, but he doesn't play small. Even in the defensive zone, like, sometimes he's so aggressive. It's it's crazy. You, you watch him, it's... He, per he will pursue he or he will chase you down on the PK. He will chase you down into your zone and he will take the puck from you. And he, he finds a way to score on the PK. He scores on the power play. He scores at 5v5. He scores every time he's on the ice. He's always the biggest threat on the ice when he's on it. So, yeah, the Berkeley captain at number four. And honestly, maybe he should be number three. <laughs> I don't know but I like him a lot. I like him really a lot. He's one of my favorite players in the draft. At number three, I have Sam Dickinson, and he's the last guy that I've made a video on uh, as of right now. Uh, I have a full scouting report on him, and he's really good. <laughs> he's a he's a big guy. He's like six foot three. He skates really really well. Um, he's not an elite skater, but he's like a high end skater or close to it, something like that. He's very he's and he, He's a high-end skater in every direction. Like, he can pivot really well. He can go backward really well. He can go forward really well. He uses crossover to gain speed in the neutral zone when he transitions the puck. 
Uh, overall, just a very smooth looking defender when he skates. Uh, he's very confident with the puck on his stick. He creates all kinds of plays. I think he's getting better and better offensively. I'm not sure if he's still a uh, point per game. Let me check a second. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, he's at 47 points in 49 game with 14 goals. So the production is there, but the thing is that you're getting you're getting a sure shot with uh, Sam Dickinson. Like there's no there's no weakness. Like defensively, it, I don't think it's as good as what people make it out to be. Like he's uh, I don't know, like the best defender that ever existed, but he's very solid and there's plenty of room for him to be coached defensively anyway i don't think he's as aggressive as he should be and i don't think he uses his body as much as he should also but those are all things that will come with maturity and when he just becomes stronger right? he's six foot three 195 pounds he's a june birthday so he's very young also but Defensively, there's a ton of potential, but I would like to see him a little bit more aggressive. And on the offense, he's just, he's really, really good. And what I like about him, like I said in my scouting report, is that his offense is pro-like. It's not, it's not like trying to dangle people around, around uh, in the offensive zone. Like, let's say Yak and Chuck for some reason, uh, for some, for, for example, is. He like like I said earlier, he then goes around every player. He uses his hands to just move down in the zone and send pucks or shoot the puck that way. And it works now. Is it going to be the same thing in the NHL? I don't know. Well, Sam Dickinson doesn't really do that. Sam Dickinson is much more simple, but it's extremely effective. And he sends the puck right on tape every single time or he shoots the puck hard from, a, from the point and he gets rebounds. He keeps it low. He... I don't know. I think his game is so translatable to the NHL. That's why I still have him at number three. Even though he's not the most exciting, uh, the package is just overall very good. When you take a guy at six foot three, skates like the wind, has good offensive game, very simple, pro like offensive game, defend really well, could use maybe a little bit more aggressivity, a little bit more uh, assertiveness in his defense game. But outside of that, it's really well. It's really well. It's really good. Uh, the transition game, whether he break it out by himself or by passing, he can shake off defenders, shake off the pressure, the four checkers very easily. And he's very hard to strip the puck from when he has it. He's heavy on the puck. So, yeah, I think the the potential is sky high as a two-way defender in the NHL. I think him and, like, Lev Shunov, or maybe the two that I think might have like the potential to be a real number one defenseman. Outside of that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's for for Slayev or Yakimchuk and Zayn Perek. I think they might be more like in the top four, and uh, Dickinson and Levshunov maybe more in the top pair or number one defenseman. All right, so go watch the video if you're interested. Uh, tons of highlights and deep dive into his game. At number two. I have the Russian star, <laughs> Ivan Dimidov, and I'm going to have a full video on him at two at some point, but not right now. I think so, I will. Uh, he's just the most exciting player in the draft. There's there's nobody you can watch and have as much fun as this guy. Even if you take players like from last year, like, uh, like Mishkov, Mishkov is not even close to be as fun to watch as Demidov. Demidov is just so dynamic. Is uh, I, I don't I'm not saying that he's better than Mishkov because I think Mishkov is better than Deminov, but I, he's he's a he's the most dynamic player in the draft in the sense that he drives play and he he has such good good hands that puck just takes on his stick. It's uh, like I can't even put it in two words. <laughs> it's just when you the the way he plays. Look, I'm not sure the NHL is like that because obviously the defenders are better, the bigger, they can just push you to the side if they want to, especially where you're not that big. But it's a bit like Kaprizov, you know, you watch Kaprizov, he's very like fast and aggressive and powerful in the offensive zone. Like he's not he's not passive, he's not slowing down trying to make plays like uh, uh how can I say that like you know, slowing down the game. The Kaprizov plays at full pace all the time. He's always one hundred percent, one hundred percent 
in the game, pedal to the metal, just trying to make plays, driving the metal, shooting the puck, making plays, using his hands. Well, Demidov is a bit that way in a sense that he's just a bull on the ice that skates well and has crazy skills. So he's not the best shooter there is out there, but he's still a pretty good shooter. Uh, he's an excellent passer, but the, what he can do with his hands and the way he can just dangle around people and pass the puck between sticks and between his legs and just still drag everybody and make everybody miss, uh, like fake one way, go the other way, shake everybody. It's uh, it's pretty incredible to watch. The fact that he's in the MHL right now is a little bit like weird. <laughs> I don't honestly I don't know why they have him in the in the MHL he's burning it like if I look at the stats the seconds is he has 45 points in 23 games 20 goals in 23 games so obviously he's way too strong for that league why is he still why is he there I don't know but uh maybe he should be at least in the VHL or <laughs> I don't know do something help him but he's having a ton of fun because he can watch in the game like he had a game with four points or five points recently. Then uh, I mean, it was just crazy. And it was six points. Yeah, he had five goals and he had six points. He had another one with five points the, the game before and then three points the, the game after. He's just so dominant. But the MHL is not a good league. So it's hard to like evaluate how good is he really. Like obviously when you look at the tools, the tools are, the tools are elite. So... That's that's easy, but it's like to how do you compare him to other players that are very toolsy because he plays in a league that's so like meh, <laughs> right? So I would like to see him in the KHL or the VHL and try to compare him, but probably not. And also his production, like he, it's hard to compare his production with other players from uh from the MHL because player of that type of pedigree and that type of skills are not usually in the MHL. They're higher up in the VHL or the KHL. So even if you try to compare with Mishka, Mishka was in the KHL and VHL last season, so you can't really compare. Uh, but in his draft minus one, I think, or in this draft minus two, um, let me check for a second. Uh, yeah, well, in his draft minus one, like, he's says he's second uh, in the history of the uh, the MHL for point production, just behind Mishkov, uh, Mishkov still have a significant advantage, but still, it's still pretty impressive that he's second in that league all time uh, in point production as a draft minus one. And when you watch the tools and you look at the production, you're like, yeah, that's a real player. All right. So yeah, video to come on him at some point. Uh, and at number one, I mean. Like everybody else, I don't think there's a single person that doesn't have him number one. It's Macklin Celebrini. And the reason for that is that he checks every box. <laughs> it's pretty easy. The fact that you look at the production and the production matches what you see on the ice. It's not just like you look at a player and he's good on the ice, but the production isn't following. Or uh, the production is there, but you look at a guy and you're like, I'm not sure why he's producing that much with him. He has both. He has the production and he has the tools when you look at him. Uh, I think he's like fourth in NCAA in point per per game for as a draft eligible in the history. Like there's like Eichel and Fantilly over him or something like that in the last 25 years. Um, yeah, no, that's not, that's not, he's fourth in the NCAA in terms of points and he's third in point per game as a draft eligible in the last 25 years behind Jack Eichel and Adam Fantilly. Uh, he's very, very young for the draft too. I think he's, um, let me check. He's a June birthday, so he's still very young. Not as much as Cole Iserman, but still, you like to have a guy that's producing that much in the NCAA and still be a June birthday. Uh, on the ice, he does pretty much everything to a high end level. Like, is he the best at everything? I wouldn't say so. Uh, is he like the best shooter? Probably not. I think Eisenman is the best shooter, but he's like close second, maybe third. I don't know. Is he the best skater? Probably not again, but he's very close to be the best skater. Is he the best passer? Maybe he is, or if he's not, he's like second. So he's just the best at everything. And not the best, but close to be the best at everything. And he's also extremely competitive. 
he works hard everywhere on the ice. I think he's the most competitive player or maybe second most competitive player in the draft. He, you can see that he takes care of himself too. I think his, his father is the, like the sports science, medicine and health or whatever director for the <laughs> Golden Knight Warriors. So I'm pretty sure that training is something that's important in his family. And I'm sure he, he's got it, he's got it down. And, uh, Yeah, I think overall, a guy that scored 39 points in 24 games uh, in the NCAA and has eight points in five games at the U20 as a 17-year-old. Obviously, it's not on Bedard's level, but like if he was in last year's draft, I think he would very much be in a conversation with uh, Adam Fentley and Leo Carson, so... He's that type of player. He doesn't have the same physical tools in the sense that he's six foot and not six foot three or whatever Leo Carson is and six foot two for like mentally. And he also plays a very different game. But uh, I think he would be pretty much in that conversation because he's also the the more complete of all of those. Like Leo Carson is the better playmaker. He also has a good shot, but it's not a spectacular shot. He's in the greatest greatest skater, but he's a fabulous playmaker the the, it's the other way around for uh, adam fantasy he's a hard shooter he plays very physical he's very competitive he's fast but um he's probably not the best passer or the best playmaker but he handles the puck like like basically no one else no one else can so but macklin celebrini kind of combines the best of both without the physical attributes And you take you take the fact that he's very good def- he's very good defensively. He's gonna end up like a superstar, maybe point per game, maybe over that player. And he's also gonna be a very positive impact on the defensive side of the game. So, uh, yeah, whoever gets him is gonna be pretty happy. I think. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's the Habs. So yeah, that's it. Number one, Macklin Celebrini. Uh, yeah, it's the end. That was the second part. I hope you liked it. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you like this. So like this, I can know if I can keep doing stuff like that, like rankings or or just players that I don't have time to make a scouting report on, if I can just talk about them or if you have any ideas for other type of podcast slash video thing, just let me know and uh, see if I can make it work. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Uh, watching. Thank you for listening. <laughs> see you in the next one. Peace.